This is episode 30 with Bo Estes. This is the Sports Business Classroom audio experience. If you recognize the voice, let me put a name with it. I'm Bo Estes, a host on NBA TV and an announcer on NBA.com, and I'm one of the instructors at SBC. Welcome to the show. Now, breaking into the world of sports can seem daunting, but if you're looking for a leg up, you've come to the right place. Each week, we talk to top-notch figures all across the industry to bring you lessons and advice to learn from. Thanks for spending some time with us today, and let the experience begin. Sports Business Classroom is an immersive sports business training and educational experience unlike any other. In addition to this podcast, SBC provides numerous opportunities for those looking to break into and grow in the world of professional sports. One opportunity that I'd specifically like to tell you about today is the CBA Mastery Course with none other than Larry Kuhn. Larry is undoubtedly, and I can't stress this enough, undoubtedly the leading expert on the collective bargaining agreement. He has been teaching the materials to teams, agents, media, and students for over 20 years as an expert on the topic. Now, for the first time ever, he has an online course containing all of his material available for purchase to the general public. So, if you're looking to work in an NBA front office one day, this information is imperative to know. And by completing this course, you can not only learn the material, but you can become an expert in it as well. Larry Kuhn's CBA Mastery course is presented by SBC and is a surefire way to put yourself in a position to land a killer job in the business of basketball. Registration is now open, so visit sportsbusinessclassroom.com today to take a step toward the career of your dreams. The Sports Business Classroom audio experience is brought to you by Hall Pass Media and Hall Pass Studios. Hall Pass Media is a full-service marketing agency that specializes in brand consulting, event management, digital marketing, and creative design. All Pass has a wide range of clients and partners that include the NBA Summer League, the NBA Coaches Association, and the Basketball Tournament, just to name a few. For more information, please visit hallpassnetwork.com. Today's guest is the great Bo Estes, also known as the Goatman Tater. Bo is a co-host and columnist for Turner Sports and is most recognized for his work on NBA.com and NBA TV. If you've ever watched NBA.com's top 10 highlights, you're familiar with Bo's work. Bo first appeared on the Sports Business Classroom podcast in episode 7, which if you haven't heard yet, I would highly encourage you to go back to and listen, because it was a phenomenal conversation with a true pro and a dear friend that has accomplished a lot throughout his career. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special episode because in this episode, Bo turns the tables and interviews me. In this episode, we discuss habits and mentors, my career path, and how to get better each and every day. Bo is a fantastic interviewer. This chat was a ton of fun, and I can't wait for you to hear the special surprise we have in store for you. So make sure to take a listen. Without further ado, I give you my wide-ranging conversation with NBA TV's Bo Estes. So uh, one more time, the, uh, the voice warm-up. The vocal 20, warm up. 20 dwarves took turns doing handstands on the carpet. It's for enunciation and articulations. 20 dwarves took turns doing handstands on the carpet. Correct. 20. That, and then you recommended a tongue bite. A tongue per, bite. Per Aaron Andrews. Per Aaron Andrews. When we were kid reporters for the Braves, that's what she told me she did. Okay. I like it. <clears throat> God, that's 100 million years ago. Well, Bo, welcome to the show. Uh, my pleasure to be here, Sergio. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's it's great to be here. We've had about a six months hi- hiatus since I've been doing the show or done the podcast, and uh, it's it's really good to have you here. Really good to have you here. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm always excited to have these conversations uh, in the world we're in right now. I think it's great to talk to people. It's great to learn from each other and share these experiences. It absolutely is. And uh, I had a got super exciting announcement here. Uh, 
We are moving forward, going to be turning over the mic to the one and only Bo Estes moving forward for the SBC audio experience, which is going to be fantastic. Yeah. So like, I, I, I would like to act surprised now, but we have discussed this, but I'm very excited. I'm thrilled. I, I'll tell you, Sergio, you, in our last conversation, I talked about growing up and, and having the dream of being a sportscaster and an NBA broadcaster. And that's all true. And, and as I grew a little bit older, one thing I've always wanted to do was have a chance to do a long form interview show where I get to talk to people in a more expansive environment and, and what you've been doing and what you've put together is, is that dream come to reality. So I, I'm excited and thrilled. Hey, I'm, we're, I'm super excited to have you. And based on so many different factors, I couldn't think of anybody better to, uh, you know, to carry the torch. So look forward yeah. to seeing what you put together. Well, since the torch has been passed, we're going we're gonna to put the mirror on the interviewer now. You get to become the subject. Okay. Uh, so no nerves. We're excited about this, Sergio. I, I, know, uh, I know how much fun it is to be the subject of an interview. So now that is your role, and I get to interview you. And the first thing I want to know, I, I guess what's interesting to me is in my mind, I have these two visions. Sergio as a kid mm-hmm. is a Canada kid. And then Sergio's a California guy. And yeah. these are two very specific things in my head, okay. a Canada guy and a California guy. Tell me how those work together. Tell me about sort of your upbringing and, and how this all came together. Wow. So Canada guy is very different from California guy. Sure. As yeah. I'm sure you can imagine. Yeah. Um, Canada guy was many, many moons ago. Okay. Yep. But I, I was uh, born and raised in Toronto. Yep. Okay. And I lived there till I was eight. And, you know, Canada guy was very, very shy, um, very, very overweight, very, very unsure of himself, you know, and just I was a huge sports fan growing up. Yep. But uh, yeah, I mean, Canada guy loved the Blue Jays, loved the Maple Leafs. This was before the Raptors, but huge sports sports fan growing up. And uh, yeah, I lived there till I was eight before we moved to Mexico City because my dad's job. Okay. And how, do, does the Canada background in you, does it, does it still exist in you somewhere? Is there still any influence in your life from that Canada experience and, the, and those roots? You know, I'll drop an A every once in a while, you know, <laughs> but that, that's honestly, it, as sad as it, it is to say, that's, that's about it. You know, so you're, I am you're, a proud Canadian, but I haven't been back in about 15 years. I hear Toronto is one of the coolest cities in the country, in the world. But I haven't been back in quite a I can, bit. I can confirm that. It's wonderful in, in Toronto. Um, so that gets me to the next part. Uh, you grew up in, in, God, lovely Southern California. Yeah. Uh, you go to high school out there. And I, I'm trying to think. You, you talked about being an overweight kid. Obviously, yeah. you, that's not your life anymore. Uh, no. You go to Southern California, and it's, I think it's a legal requirement that everybody's perfectly fit out there, and you've, <laughs> you've, you've acquiesced. So uh, tell me, if I could talk to 15-year-old Sergio, yeah, what are Sergio's dreams? What, what did Sergio want to do with his life when, when, when we're talking with 15-year-old Sergio? Wow, that's a very good question. 15-year-old, 15-year-old Sergio had no idea what it was that he wanted to do with his life, to be honest yeah. with you. You know, so... Um, so I no had, direction, no direction at all. None okay. at all. No, no, none at all. Just to be honest with you, just, I was just trying to fit in. I had gotten to a new high school. Um, I had just moved to Southern California from Chile where okay. my dad is from, Yep. you know, and just wanted to play sports, wanted to, you know, meet a bunch of people, make some friends and no direction at all. Uh, and that seems very different from you now. Yes. You are very directed. I, 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 I almost am understating that by saying that you're motivated, you're directed, you have a, a design course that you want to go on. So where did that come from? Wow, that's a that's a very good question. That came from, you know, going to USC, I had the opportunity to talk to a lot of different people who were great. Right. Yep. And one of those people that I actually came into contact with. Um, through a mutual friend of ours, Jeff Fellinser, was Coach George Raveling. Oh, oh yeah. I've sure. spoken about quite a bit on the podcast. You know, and he really opened up my eyes in a lot of different ways as far as some of the things that the greatest people in the world would do to become great. Right. Yep. And that really set me on a path 
to, to really become a lifelong learner. I've always been a lifelong learner. I love to read. I love to listen to audio, uh, to podcasts, sure. audio books. But um, yeah, it was just seeing how he operated and the people around him operated, you know, at such a high level, accomplishing so much that I started to kind of dig into, you know, that aspect of my life. Do you think there was just a maturation that happened when you get to USC or like if you meet George Raveling when you're 15, do you think it would have hit you or do you think you weren't mature enough? I'm, I'm just wondering if this if this I'm going to be a lifelong learner thing is something that's natural in you or if it's something you saw in somebody like Raveling and a couple of other people that you said, man, I want to mimic that because they're getting to the places I want to go. Yeah, a little bit of both, right? I was always a good student growing up. I always enjoyed school. I always enjoyed reading books, but yeah, it wasn't until, man, I must have been 27, 28 years old that I really decided, hey, if I want to get to where I want to go as a human being, as a professional, and just all aspects of my life, it would be a smart idea to look at what all the top performing people in the world are doing, right? And one of the books that actually changed my life was written by a um, great author by the name of Tim Ferriss. And he's got a very famous podcast where he brings on people from all different walks of life and literally just walks through what their daily habits, routines are so that the listeners can, you know, mimic or take a shot at mimicking what it is that these super high performers do. And man, I probably listened to every episode of that show and tried just about everything that these people um, have implemented into their life. What's interesting to me is you seem, at least from the outside to me, self-actualized in this process. You seem like you're a long way towards being able to implement a habit however you want, whenever you want. Yeah. Is that fair to say or is it still a challenge for you and you have to get the engine rolling? Or do you have this, this system down so pat that you can knock it out every time? So this is going to sound weird, but I'm, I'm the guy that has a habit tracker. Okay. What's so that? I, What's a habit tracker? So it's, it's, it's a piece of paper. It's my playbook for the day. Okay. It's my playbook. And essentially what I've done through listening to, again, people like George Raveling, um, Albert Hall, all of my mentors and all these people that I respect and that I want to become one day, I've taken, you know, little habits here and there from each of them and have attempted to put them into my life. Right. And so rather than let my day just take its course, I've got a playbook that I live by every single day with about eight to 10 different items of things that I want to accomplish. That is each day different? No, no. Oh, okay. okay. Now it, we can go through a few of these things. I, if I, want, like. I want to know, like you wake up the first yeah. two things you have to do. What, what are you doing? <sighs> Meditation is one of them. Okay. okay. Meditation. That, how long does this take? That's a 20 minute routine. Okay. okay. I'll read for 20 minutes as well. After okay. meditating. Yep. And then, so does this put your mind in a place where you feel like you're going to function better throughout the day? Oh, I know I function better because of the meditation. Okay. So um, there's that. There's, you know, setting the priorities for the day. Okay. When I'm in a, in a calm, collected, centered place, right? That's, yep. that, that certainly helps. Um, a little bit of journaling, right? Getting my thoughts on paper as far as how I'm feeling, what's bothering me, you know, and, and most of these things that I do just set me up to have a really good productive day. Okay. So as we're having this conversation, I'm in Atlanta mm -hmm. and Sergio is in, is in California. And when, when I met you and I, I learned about all this with you, I was like, man, that seems so California. That <laughs> seems like such a California, like a mindset where I'm going to tackle everything and we're going to get all this stuff done. And it's mindfulness and meditation and yoga. Do you think that that's a part of the culture out there? Or is this something that you independently have developed? How, how does that work? Well, I don't really know anybody. There's nobody in my immediate circle that is into a lot of these things. So it's, again, you know, they say, I think this is a Tony Robbins quote, success leaves clues, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. And, and so as I've spent the past, let's say, 10 years reading as much as I can, learning as much as I can from, you know, all the greatest people in history or even the greatest people right now, right? I've been picking off habits here and there from all of them. And, you know, the best ones that have stuck that I've seen have actually influenced my life. That's 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 my playbook for the day. 
how long do these habits last? Do, do some last five years? Do some last six months? Or do or are these like, these are ones that, okay, these have made the cut and they're lasting for life. Yeah, they, most of them, the, my playbook, my current playbook has been going for about a year or two now. So you could, if you were to tell me, for example, that it's scientifically proven that I did, if I did X every single day, I'm capable of doing that now. Wow. Without question. Without question. And, and I, I mean, the list is pretty extensive as far as the list of habit. I mean, like I said, there's 10 items that I check a box every single day. You really, you legitimately check a box. I absolutely, I, I, I fill in a box to be, to be exact and correct, but yes. And again, it, and that, and that what way. What do you get out of this? What do you get out of this? Well, I don't have to, de- look, if I've decided that. I want to be like Albert Hall, or I want to be like yeah. George Rabling, or I want to be like Tony Robbins, or I want to be like Elon Musk, right? These guys are doing certain things on a daily basis to be those people, right? Yeah. So for me, rather than just letting life kind of come at me, I'm attacking it with the different things that I believe will influence my life in the greatest way. Who's your role model mentally for doing this and, and having this sort of life philosophy? Probably Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss is one of those guys. I mean, he's, a, he's a, you know, I've had the opportunity to meet him a couple times now. Oh, um, what was I, that like? Well, I mean, it was quick. I helped produce a podcast um, with Coach George Raveling on sure. it, right? But yeah, it was certainly interesting after having listened to 300 of his episodes to have produced one of his podcast episodes myself. That was, that was awesome. That's fast. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and look, he's, he's, I'm, I'm a big questions guy and I like to experiment with things and, you know, asking questions, testing different things, whether it relates to, you know, my habits, my diet, how I sleep, you know, how, how I try to become as productive as possible with work. He's one of those people. Right. And I learned kind of that from him and so now, like I said, if you were to tell me, look, if you do X, Y, and Z with very high likelihood, you will get to where you want to go. I, I, I'm capable of testing that and seeing, seeing for myself. I, w- one time when this really stood out for me is we got on the phone after sort of the pandemic happened and, and you and I had a conversation. Uh, right, at, I was on NBA TV the day that it broke and the league shut down and we probably talked two days afterwards. And I was like, so how you doing, Sergio? How you feeling? And this is, I will never forget this. And you said to me, I'm fine. I've got some goals. I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, it was like, it was already sorted. It was already done. And you knew what you were going to do. Uh, and that has to give you some sort of um, almost peace, I would imagine. Is that right? Absolutely. I mean, it, it, like I said, all of the different things that I do on a day-to-day basis this isn't that I just decided that, hey, this would be a good idea for me to implement. This is, you know, this super successful person or influential person in the history of the world did this on a daily basis. Why not give it a shot? And so just going back to the habit tracker in the playbook, I know with certainty that if I execute all of those things on a daily basis, that my my day is better than if for example, I had just let the day, come, uh, you know, come at me. How does this work in your personal life? I mean, I know you have a family and you know, the people close to you. Are they, are they all in the same mind frame of mind or are they like, all right, Sergio's going to go do what Sergio's going to do. How does that work? Are they parallel with you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I wake up earlier. Okay. So that, you know, my stuff doesn't get, you know, <laughs> intermixed. I mean, I'm completely cognizant, Bo, by the way, that I've got, you know, my it's stuff. fascinating though. It's fascinating. Yeah. You know, I mean, and so look, I make space for this and I make sure that it's not an intrusion on anybody. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's, I am very clear on how I want to sleep, how I want to eat, uh, how you what want to I sleep. Wanna... Wait, how you want to sleep? Explain that. Well, I'm going to sound like a lunatic on this thing, but you know, I've got a sleep tracker. Okay. Well, people have that. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. here in Georgia, people have that. Yeah. It, well, so I've got a sleep tracker. Okay. And so right now I'm testing. Okay. I used to be the guy that would get up at 4.30 in the morning. Okay. You're a scientist. At the yeah. end of the day, you're a scientist. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I am I, I I am constantly experimenting on myself for sure. No question. You know, and <laughs> that's and, a and, heck of a quote. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Going back to, you know, my wife and daughter, how do they how much do they explore well, my my daughter's only three, right? So she's not completely cognizant of how crazy dad is. <laughs> but you know, my wife likes the results, right? She knows, you know, she knows the worst version of me. And she she sees how much better this version of me actually is. Did, now, has, has she tried it too? She's tried a few of the things. And again, uh, you know, I don't push anything that I do or that I think would be a good idea for everybody else to do onto anybody. Right? I feel like your example would push it, though, because of the success you have. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it certainly has with colleagues, friends, you know, and I, and I'll talk about this with anybody who like, who wants to talk about it because you know, that's really what I'm passionate about other than sports and my family and all that. My, my passion is just to continue to evolve and grow as a human being each and every day. Like that's what excites me is when I'm making progress. I want to build up to something here then take me back to when you were younger, what sports did you enjoy and, and what did you play? So or, or watch. Ho- what did you love? Yeah, I loved baseball, loved hockey, um, loved basketball, you know, and I really started to like football when I got to Southern California. Sure. But, um, you know, as I mentioned, I, I grew up in Mexico City and, and, and Chile. Yeah. Okay? And so, you know, back in the 90s, you weren't getting every NBA game in Mexico City. <laughs> you weren't you certainly weren't seeing every NFL game like you can now. Yeah. Right. But um yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I loved all sports. Okay. So did you have a dream of being an athlete or was it just something you enjoyed watching? Was there, was there like a dream, like a lot of lot, young kids like me, I wanted to be a pro soccer player or a pro NBA player. It didn't work out, but did you have a dream <laughs> in that regard or not? You know, as far as becoming an athlete, I, I think it was pretty clear when, <laughs> you know, I was never the first guy chosen. That, yep. was, that wasn't, you know, the path for me. So did you have a dream career or, you know, my, my story is unique. So yeah. what was yours? Uh, I mean, after I got out of high school, okay, I decided I wanted to be an agent. Okay. I wanted to be oh, a okay. basketball agent. Okay. And, and that's really why I chose USC. Um, just because, you know, there's a lot of stuff as far as sports goes. Um, going on at USC, I thought that would give me the best opportunity to get there. So that that gets me sort of to where I want to be now. Uh, you talk about wanting to be an agent. Your your career ends up pretty close to yeah. where you're working in the business and you're working with agents for sure. Yep. Uh, you're very you're very close in parad- or in, in proximity to them. So yeah. my question to you is: When you wake up in the morning, what's you know, what are you excited about coming to work? What are you excited about doing? And what does a successful day at the end of the day look like for you? Because for me, it's very clear, but I just talk about basketball. So mine's unique. What's exciting for you and what's a successful day look like for you? Man, that's a really good question. So on a personal level, a successful day is executing on a lot of my habits, okay? Yep. Which yep. does feed into the professional part. You know, one of the things that I love about my job is that no two days are the same. Okay. okay. None okay. of none of them are the yeah. same. So it's really <laughs> dependent on what what projects we're working on, on in, in the day. Yeah. But as far as what fires me up is, you know, so I'm in, I'm in digital marketing. Okay. Yep. And for me, the most exciting thing we can do from a digital marketing perspective is produce leads and produce sales. Right. And so, that excites you. That literally excites you to your absolute, absolutely, okay. Okay. absolutely. And and again, you go back to the scientist thing, right? Oh, I'm a big yeah, yeah, cause yeah. and effect guy. Yeah, right? yeah. I want to know we put X campaign in place and it resulted in Y. Okay, and I really don't care what it. I mean, I care about the things we're selling. But what I've come to notice is that it's really not the specific thing that we're selling. It's just producing results. I'm guessing predictability is your business. If you can predict an outcome based on what you're saying is going to happen, then you're doing your job right. Is that right? Absolutely. I mean, there's, you know, things are always changing. The digital marketing landscape is always changing. But yes, that's what you're you're constantly working towards is working towards a science where, like you said, you 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 execute a campaign, 
you get predictable results. Things will vary slightly, but you want to get to that predictability. And I know you can be tough on yourself too, right? Absolutely. So tell tell me about that and how you manage that and how you don't let it. I, I assume you don't let it go too far so that it doesn't impact the next day. How does that work? You expect results from yourself. No question. There's yeah. absolutely no yeah. question that I expect results from myself. And, you know, that's something that I'm working on personally, to be honest with you, is, you know, not being so hard, um, not, not being so hard on myself and, you know, it's funny. My, I've I've got a performance coach that I work with um, by the name of Sam Obitz, who's been on the show, actually. Yep, yep. So definitely encourage everybody who's listening to go back and listen to that episode. And you know what? The truth is, it's about process, right? And when you, when you set expectations for yourself, you're always almost setting yourself up for for failure, right? You 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 want to you want to set goals for yourself. Right. But there's so many outside factors that can affect your day that, you know, expectations could definitely hurt you. So it's about setting forth a process that you know will get you to where you want to go and living with the results. Right. And so that's one of the things that I'm working on right now. So tell me about we all make this transition if we last long enough in our career of going from sort of a further down on the ladder to becoming a leader. Mm-hmm. Tell me how that's worked for you and tell me what leadership means to you and, and how you try to lead at Hall Pass. That's a very good question. Um, you know, one of the things I, I, I said this to a group of students the other day is that, you know, you, you don't need to be given a title to be a leader, right? Mm-hmm. To be a leader, it's really about your actions and example, Right. And so that's really what I've tried to do my whole career, right? Is, you know, I did get to a point where everybody said, okay, Sergio's part of the leadership. Yeah. But prior to that, you know, I, I ascended to that level by just being the example um, of what was possible. Was that something that you studied others on how to become a leader? Was that, was that a process for you to a planned process? Not a planned process. No, that, I mean, that was just, you know, just, just observing again, you know, I'm a consequence I'm, of hard work and preparation. Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, that that's for sure. But, you know, just from a leadership standpoint, there's no, there's no formula for leadership. Right. And yeah. so, you know, you got to figure out what leadership style applies to your personality and who you are. Right. And then, you know, I think all young leaders go through this. They try different things. They see the cause and effect, like we were talking about, of, you know, how how your actions influence the people around you. And, you know, eventually, you know, if you're observant, you you figure out what's working, what's not working. There have been a few people come through Turner Sports in the 25 years that I've been there, that they were 22 when they arrived. And I was able to say, that person right there is going to make it. Mm-hmm. They're going to be big at this company. And I don't know necessarily what it was. And I wish I I wish I could pinpoint it. I wish I could, but I imagine there, there's potentially a science to that. But I think that is that gift of leadership and the burden is something that you have to balance. It really is, because you know, with with leadership comes responsibility. And if the thing fails, it's on you. So I imagine that weighs on you heavy as the head that wears the crown, I suppose. It certainly does. It certainly does. But it also motivates me. Right. And and that's <laughs> that's what motivates me. Like we come full circle here, Bo. Yep. That's what motivates me to execute on my crazy habits list. OK, is my wanting to be great for our company, for my colleagues, for my wife and for my child. Right. And that is front and center for me every single day. And that's what pushes me to do the things that I, you know, at times don't want to do every day. I'm going to go off topic here just a second. So you you have all this focus and you have all these plans for your day and you want to be great for your your, your wife and your your child. Mm -hmm. Is there is there a decompression process that you go through to say, okay, work is done and now it's dad and husband time? Is that is that easy for you? It is. It, 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 it it's is. Become, it's become easy for me. Right. Okay. And again, through. through I can long- imagine an Albert call at 1145 at night that, you know, everything in the world's scrambling and we got to jump on something now and your mind jumps right back in. So it is easy, though, for you. It is. Yeah. You know, and, and, and 
you know what i've i've adapted to you know to the pressures of everything that's sure. in front of me right so sure. you know but again part of the part of the ongoing experiment that is sergio is figuring out <laughs> Hey, how do I, how do I put all these things together, which at some time, you know, there, there's competing wants and needs, right? The, the guy in me that wants to produce results can work 19 hours a day, yeah. right? But I've seen there, it in Las Vegas. It, it, the, there's also a guy in me who understands that for me personally, sleep is important for my creativity, for my mood, right? And so it's a, it's a, it's a balancing act, right? Like anything else in life, it's a balancing act. And we're, we're, we're constantly refining how we're turning the dials. But what I'm excited about as far as where I'm at is that the dials are there. I'm cognizant of what's working for me and what's not. And, you know, whenever a new situation arises, I'm able to, to kind of figure it out because I've got my playbook. So, if nothing else comes from this conversation, I think we've got your autobiogra- uh, autobiography, uh, <laughs> autobiography, <laughs> what is it? Autobiographical title? Uh, autobiography title. There you go. We've got it for you now. The ongoing experiment that is Sergio by there Sergio. You go. I there like you go. that title. I think that really works for you. Um, so- and, and to that point, Bo, okay. Yeah. One of the things, you know, as you mentioned, I'm part of the leadership of the NBA Summer League. And, you know, so every single day as we gather our interns and our staff, you know, I give a little speech every single day about what it is we want to accomplish, how do we, how we want to attack the day, the different things that, you know, we'd like to see happen. And part of my ask is, look, nobody needs to be as crazy as I am as far as the habits go, but we want to make sure we're better every day. Has anybody it. followed your habits though and, and had some success? Have you had somebody like, like a pupil, if you will, that sort of followed and had some real success? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, and again, you have to be the right type of person and in the right point in your life to, okay. you know, to test all this. But uh, Jake Kelfer, yeah. who, you know, is a part of the NBA Summer League family, is sure. somebody who I've mentored for a long time. He's, he's on a very similar path as I am. And he's, you know, constantly um, seeking out knowledge that he can implement into his own life. And he's really sharp, positive, and energetic in the same way that you are. So whether that's habits or whether it's, you know, he's the sort of same type of person as you are, or some combination of both, it has worked for him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just one last thing on the habits is we all, whether we know it or not, are executing habits every single day, right? Yep. Every single day. Now, whether or not you are in control of what it is you're doing every single day, that's a different story. And there's a fantastic book uh, on this called that I've mentioned on the podcast before. It's called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And it breaks down the science of habits so that if, for example, there was something you wanted to implement in your life, whatever that may be, there's a science as far as how to make that easier on yourself. Yeah. I mean, I think personally I could use that because what I have done in my life is I figured out exactly what I need to do. And I do that exactly. I, I absolutely nailed down a, a process that works for me. Now, what that doesn't allow me to do that probably you do in a better way is experiment outside the box mm-hmm. as much. Once I figured out like with my job at the NBA, I know exactly what it is. I know exactly what I need to do. I know when people are veering off what supports me in our team's success Mm -hmm. and I get them back in line, but there is no greater vision, I doubt. So I'm fascinated with that idea. One other idea I'm fascinated with, with you, it it takes a lot of guts to do what you did. And I'm going to reference a story. I I was talking with a guy who's a, a famous NBA general manager now, and he told me that he turned down his first NBA GM job. And I just remember I was blown away and I was like, who turns down an NBA GM job? Who has the guts to do that when that opportunity? And he said, it didn't feel right in what I was trying to accomplish and where I was going with my life. And I've seen you turn down stuff Mm -hmm. and turn away stuff that you thought this does not fit within my, uh, my path. Yeah. Where in the world do the do, do those guts come from? 
to turn something down, to turn an opportunity down, especially big opportunities? You know, it's just a belief on the path that you're actually on, right? And it's about, for me, it's about whenever there's a big decision in my life to be made, right? We talk about, you know, I've got these habits. I execute them every day. Part of it is creating the space to be able to think, right? A lot of us don't, you know, we're go, 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 right? If, if you know, there's a moment of silence, we're looking at our phone, we're checking emails, we're calling somebody, we're texting. I think there's, a, there's something that people have lost these days as a result of technology in that people aren't creating space to just think and work through ideas, right? And so one thing I am clear on is who as a person I want to become in all aspects of my life. Who is and that? Who is that? Who do you want to become? Well, it varies. It varies. It varies depending on- Well, you said on, you're clear. There is a yeah, vision yeah. out there, right? There is a vision out there, okay? I won't share too much about it, but <laughs> I, and, and I look at that vision once a week. Oh. Yeah, and, and, and I look back and I evaluate whether or not the decisions I made the, the week prior are in line with who it is I want to become, the type of person I want to become. You know, and these things just, you know, it's as a human being, right? Or as a dad or as a husband or as a professional, right? It's like if you know where you want to go, the steps to get there are, it's just so much easier to get there if you're clear on who it is that you want to become in the different aspects of your life. And that, that funds those guts to say no, I suppose to say yeah. no to something that outside people would say, man, that is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And you've got the guts to say no. Yeah. You know, it, it really does. And again, I think it, it all starts with being clear on who it is you want to become. Maybe not, you know, in old age, you know, not who you want to become 50 years from now, but sure. in the short term, who is it that you want to become, right? And, and, and I encourage everybody who's listening to really put some deep thought into that. Because if you're clear and you know who you want to become, like I said, the steps not only become clear, but that gives you the energy to do the things you need to do in order to get there. Because sports aren't easy, right? No, no. Being successful is not easy. No. Being a leader is not easy, Okay. And so that's why, that's why, that's why I can put in the work that I tell you that I put in every single day is because I get that energy because I really, truly believe that it supports who I want to become. What are some of the goals you have uh, personally and professionally over the next five years? Where, where do you want to be? Where do you want to see our, our company be and everything like that? What, what are you hoping for? Man, that's, that's a tough question. Sure. No, it's yeah. particularly not because the world's a little cloudy, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it really is, you know, and a lot of things in our business have shifted, um, you know, as we talked about the NBA Summer League and a lot of our live events business is currently um, on hiatus, sure. which is OK. Yeah. Um, what, what I am proud about as far as our company goes is how we've rallied in so many different ways. So it, it feels like you can sharpen, too when you're on hiatus, because you can take that moment to say, how can we do things better when everything returns? How will things return and how can we be ready for that? Is that, is that fair? Absolutely. And I think it may have been you who said this on an SBC web show. Um, what's the quote? Never let a good uh, crisis go to waste. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's famous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's Winston Churchill. Okay. Well, I just gave you credit for that one, but we're often confused. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what though? I mean, Look, the pandemic's been tough, right, mm -hmm. for everybody, and I acknowledge that. I, but I think the perspective that you have in going into the pandemic is really, that's going to shape what your experience has been, right? And so many levels in my life, I am as best as I've ever been based on the fact that I've come to realize there are going to be downsides to this thing, right? But at the same time, there's also a ton of opportunities, right? And if you look at if you look at life through that lens, it's just so much more of a productive point of view to have rather than thinking, man, this all really sucks. And I feel like you just come away because it, there's a tendency today to get really in a negative headspace. Mm -hmm. uh, the you know just the news and you know just anything internationally. You know the pandemic. 
you can get down. So if you can find those positives and you can focus on those positives and you can grow those positives, you're going somewhere that maybe other people aren't. And I think that's really, really, geez, that's a real positive, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and just to that point, I don't need to go looking for the positives. The positives are built into my playbook, right? And that's the key, right? So all these things we're going to talk about today, they're just built in, right? And so I, I know that if I execute them, I'm going to have a positive day. And there are going to be some days that are crappy, right? But at least I'll have, you know, the certain touch points throughout the day that will have lifted my day. So if people want to follow sort of on the path that you're going on, give people an idea of the time investment overall. Like, so, so you've got a job, you get to yeah. your job and you've got a job and you can't be doing all this. You've yeah. got a family, but you start your day with X amount of hours or 30 minutes and you end your day with, with your playbook. How much time invested do you have here per day? Two and a half to three hours between, you know, workout, planning, the meditation piece, you know, maybe, maybe reading. In the reading. Yeah. There's an hour of reading done a day, you know, but one of the things that I've noticed since I've been executing all these things is that I'm just so much more productive, right? I, sure. I, I really am so much more productive going into my day, knowing exactly what I want to execute versus waking up, checking my email, seeing how everybody else what everybody else wants, right? Rather than saying, you know what? What are my most important goals for the day, right? What would attacking the day look like versus, you know, turning on the news, checking email, checking social, and let what everybody else is doing influence me? I, 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 go, I go the other way with it, right? Is, you know, what do I need to accomplish today? What does a successful day look like to me? And how do I get there? You can get caught up in a storm of information out there uh, if you let yourself. You're, you're, you're a ship without a rudder in a, in a lot of ways. Um, what do you see as in this business of basketball? What are you looking at as we come out of the pandemic? What are the opportunities going to be? What do you expect to happen? Uh, I know you're looking forward to this because this is a big part of your job. So sure. what, what are you expecting uh, and what are we planning for? Well, let's let's talk about the opportunities here. Okay. Sure. I mean, and, and and we'll start with opportunities, for example, for students, okay, since this is sports business classroom. Sure. I think the possibilities for people to put out into the world what they're capable of right now are absolutely endless. Right. And yep. so if you want to break into sports right now and you don't have any work to show for it at this point. I don't want to say that it's not, it's because you don't want it bad enough, but the possibilities to show your skill set and what you're passionate about these days are absolutely endless, right? Uh, whether it's if you're a writer, build a blog, if you want to be on camera or want to do play by play, right? It's super easy to turn on a game, turn down the volume, you know record yourself doing play by play and evaluate how you did. If you want to be in, you know, I talked to a lot of people who want to be in digital marketing, right? It's, you know, there's no reason why you can't create your own page about any topic and start executing on trying to build a following and really getting an understanding of what all the channels channels look like. So that that's one of the biggest opportunities here as it relates to, to students. And so as a, as a business, where do you see the business of basketball going uh, as we come out of this pandemic? What are you, and I'm sure strategically you're looking at opportunities in general. Where do you see it going and what, what do you see changes and what do you think? Do you think there will be a return to some sort of normalcy that people will recognize, too? Man, well, I, I, I sure hope so. I don't know. I've had some <laughs> conversations recently with some people, you know, and it really just depends on who you ask. Mm hmm. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. But what I can tell you is that um, the group that I work with, that I work with, you know, in, in Hall Pass Media, VSL Properties, that, you know, whatever the landscape looks like moving forward, that we will rally as a group and we will adapt to whatever the landscape looks like. 
So we had a conversation geez, a couple of weeks ago, and I told you that I had heard an Elon Musk conversation. Yes. And his response to something made me think of you for some reason. And I thought either this would be intriguing to Sergio or something he would bite on. But Elon Musk was like, it was asked, what invention are we going to see next? And he said he doesn't like to look at it like that. He likes, he, he asked the question of the questioner, what do you wish there was? Hmm. What do you wish there was? And that's the way he approaches business. What do you wish there was? Does that land with you? Is that a philosophy that you can wrap your mind around? Uh, that sort of, it almost like he reverse engineered the question and the approach. Yeah. I mean, look, that's the way that, it, I mean, we look at business really, you know, is that we can create different things. Well, first and foremost, thank you for putting my name in the same sentence as Elon Musk's. That's a, uh, that's a first and I appreciate that, but look, that's what business is all about, right? Is, you know, thinking about what the market wants and creating products, services, whatever it might be to support those wants. Um, so I want to dive into one other thing real quick before we start to wrap up. What are you reading now? And, and what do you think students could benefit from that you've read recently? I'm reading Sprawl Ball right now by Kirk Goldsberry, yep, which is yep. phenomenal. OK, yep. um, have heard a lot of his talks recently. And, you know, we work with him on a few different projects. So sure. I decided that I'd, I would get his book as far as books that I recommend. Okay, let's let's go there. Um, I think Tony Robbins' "Awaken the Giant Within" is hugely important, and it goes back to a point that I made earlier. Right? Everybody may think, "Oh, Tony Robbins, rah rah." You know, it just goes back to the point of having a clear vision of who you want to become. Right? Because when you have that vision, right, it's 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 a lot easier to figure out the steps that you need to take in order to get there. And this applies to every single part of your life, right? Whether, you know, for the students listening who want to break into sports, right? If you know that you want to be an agent, there are many people who have become agents in the past. And there's a set of steps that you, you know, would be a good idea for you to take in order to get there. If you, you know, I don't want to say, you know, MBA GM, because that's not a great example, but for any job or anything that you want to become, the steps are there. And so what this book did for me and has done for millions of people is give you the space to figure out what's important to you, right? So that you can systematically evaluate whether or not the actions you're taking in your life are aligned with who you say you want to become. So that one, that one's important. Um, and like I mentioned, At Atomic Habits, yep, fantastic book. Uh, yeah, those are the two that I got right now off the top of my head. Okay, I, I've just thought of another question. Are sure. you ever are you ever lazy? Do you ever just sit back? Is there ever a moment, if you think back the last five years, is there ever one where you turn it off, where you let yourself go and you Absolutely. have to dial it back in? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, it okay. probably doesn't seem like that, <laughs> but yes. But, you know, I look, we all have – Personas is not the right word, right? But we all play different roles in our lives. And, yeah. you know, I'm one person when it comes to my daughter and wife. I'm a different person when it comes to being a professional. And I'm a totally different person when, you know, I'm hanging out with my buddies or, you know. So, yes, it happens all the time. And I think that, you know, it's funny you ask that question because I, I think that the discipline that I've been able to put, put in place actually creates more space for that laziness and for that relaxation maybe enjoyment right yeah absolutely absolutely you know so it's about knowing when to turn it on and off right if i was all laziness you know nothing gets done if it's all work then i'm a miserable human being right there's there's a balance and you know and each person's completely different as far as what they can tolerate and quite frankly, what it is they want to accomplish. So that's not anybody, anything anybody can tell you. But what I do know is that you know, some of the books that I've mentioned and some of the resources I've talked about, those kind of give 
good guidelines as far as trying to figure out who you might want to become? I don't think it, it's tough to be on the inside looking out. You are the person looking outside the world, but I, I don't know that you even know what a leader you've become. And I, I want to compliment you on that because it is something that people look to you for is your leadership. And you've had a lot of success in doing that. So I think it's important that people can learn from you and learn how you've done this because there's a lot of different paths to that role, mm-hmm. but you found one that's really successful. And I think teachable, for you. So I, I, I think you should be proud of, of what you've done and what you've accomplished. And I, I think you need to wrap your arms around it. Um, last thing I want to ask you, any advice for me and any wishes for me as I carry the mic that is our baton forward here on this show? No, I mean, hey, I'm looking forward to, you know, from learning from you as far as uh, what it is you're going to do here. But you know, this, this is, the show was so much fun for me to do. And I, I couldn't possibly be prouder of what it was that we accomplished. And, you know, I'm just really looking forward to hearing, you know, what, uh, what your guests have to say, the amazing conversations you're going to have. I mean, the, some of the conversations I had were, were, were incredible. And, and, you know, one of the key takeaways for me is I spoke to people that I had known for 15 years and because it was an interview, like I got to know a whole different side of them that I had absolutely no clue about. And, and that was that was fantastic. And it it also really helped me hone in on my ability to ask questions. Right. Which which I'm all about. Sure. Well, no, it's it's exciting for me. Like I told you, this this is something I've always wanted to do. So I'm thrilled and I hope I carry it forward with you. And, you know, like I said, I'm all about season opportunities. And I think the quote I gave to you on the show that we did is of all the sad words of tongue or of pen, the saddest are these. It might have been. Yes. You got to capitalize on those opportunities in life. So I thank you for this opportunity. And on behalf of all the people that work with you, thanks so much for your leadership. We appreciate it. And we hope we make you proud on this show, Sergio. Bo, I appreciate you and checks in the mail. (laughs) Thanks so much, buddy. We'll see you later. Take care. Thank you for listening today. And thanks to Sergio for all he's done to get this podcast to where it is. If this is your first time listening, I highly recommend going back and checking out some of the episodes Sergio did. He had a wide range of guests and did a fantastic job with the interviews. You can also connect with him myself, and Sports Business Classroom across social media. I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter at NBA Bo, B-E-A-U. Sergio is on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram at Sergio Milas. That's S-E-R-G-I-O-M-I-L-L-A-S. You can follow Sports Business Classroom on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and at Sports Business Classroom, and on Twitter at Sports Biz Class. There are tons of opportunities through SBC that get posted there first. So stay up to date and be sure to give it a follow. One of the opportunities that can help you position yourself for a career in the business of basketball is Larry Kuhn's CBA Mastery course. The episode is in fact brought to you by Larry Kuhn's CBA Mastery as well as Hall Pass Media, your one-stop shop for all things sports marketing. If you're listening to this in podcast form, Be sure to leave us a rating and review. I also want to take this time to let you know all the episodes are available to watch on the Sports Business Classroom YouTube channel. And finally, be sure to check out sportsbusinessclassroom.com for the show notes, links to anything we talked about, and much, much more. I couldn't be more excited to be taking the reins of this show. Frankly, it's a dream come true. I look forward to all of the exciting interviews we've lined up, and boy, we've got some good ones. So until then, we'll see you next time.